I have a problem with this clock in as much that the um, click spring on this time train catch has gone. It's It's gone soggy and it's just not working. This one's working fine but when I put it together and I wound it up I found that this wasn't catching. So I forgot to try and do something about that. I've researched the situation as best I can and I find that uh, this is the spring here it's just a little little one that to rejuvenate it re rejuvenate it I've got to anneal it and then harden it and then temper it and that with a bit of luck will uh, resolve the problem you can see that uh, initially anyway it was blue it had been blued quite nicely at one time or another for when it originally was done so <coughs> that's my problem I want to heat it and go through the process of uh, preparing it um, to do that I've got a uh, butane propane mix uh, lamp uh, quite a big one I've got to my side uh, just in case um, a fire extinguisher but since the, if there is a fire it will be heat centered I've got this bucket of water here container which I've got handy ready in case things go wrong uh, <coughs> I've put it put the uh, spring in this little container here with some brass filings and there on these uh, additional fingers or hands or whatever you call them to hold it in a position right so the first thing to do is to heat that and heat it to cherry red the reason why I've got to do this is to uh, to be able to uh, move it into the position that I want it. Now I'm doing it this way not because uh, it's the best way of doing it but because I want to go through the process entirely uh, as best I can and this is the process I will have to finish up on anyway in getting this um, heated up to the right temperature and then cooling it when I uh, temper it. Now the reason why I'm doing this is actually for the final stage when I temper the, uh, temper the steel here. So what I've got to do now is to prepare this and get it ready hot up to cherry red almost orange and then take it from there um, I've had to burn the oil off on the uh, brass filings because these are the filings that I use or achieve to get when I um, use the uh, lay to make some brass parts. Right. Now I think that 
is now cherry red, almost orange. Now I'm going to let that cool slowly. I've got a warm bed for it to cool slowly in and that will then step, put it into a situation where I've annealed it and I will be able to, because it's softened and it's changed its uh, uh, molecular straight, uh, um, composition, I can bend it to the right level of uh, spring, to the right shape. And then after that, <coughs> I will have to um, do exactly the same, heat it up to the same temperature, not in this bed uh, here. I'm just letting it cool here because that's the apparently the right thing to do. Um, and then I'll quench in it and so that I will then harden it and then it'll be really, yeah, uh, um, the, the, the structure will have changed so that it's going to be um, really hard and so it will no longer be all all soggy it'll be hard and and will be a new spring as it were but in the wrong form because it'll be brittle um, because i will heat it up to the cherry red or a bit hotter than that up almost to the orange then i'll quench it in some water which i've got and i'll bring here and quench it in the water and then I will having done that I will temper it which means I'll again use this bed of um, filings here brass filings so that I will then be able to I hope watch this change color up to a, a, a reasonable color which should be a sort of azure blue before it turns darker grey and then into red uh, so I wanted to get it to change colour and, and take it to that stage so now I think I've more or less got that down to a temperature which will be fine and I will then adjust it to suit the uh, the spring on the clock then I will heat it up again up to harden it quench it then temper it clean it up temper it and um, let it cool slowly again right So now we're going to the next stage. It shouldn't take long, just keep this to cherry red so that it's a good bright cherry red, almost orange, and then quench it in the water and that will be uh, next stage done, hardly. Right. that. Now that's I think hardened and I now have to clean that up with emery paper so that it's going to be absolutely clean and will then take the, uh, the tempering. So now I've 
clean this off to the best of my ability and we're going to see whether we can get this to blue in these glass chips. Now change to a straw colour. It's very dark now. I think we can do. Can't get any hotter than that. Now let it cool slowly. leave that now to cool off. I think you can probably see that there's a blue there. If it's going to work it's going to be interesting. So we'll see. Well there's the spring in place at last. It's here. And you can see that it returns the click, which it didn't do before. So it's got quite a good color on it. You can just see. Uh, then the, the click is well in place now. So that was taking the spring out, annealing it, so that you could then bend it easily to the shape you wanted, so that it <coughs> was the correct shape. And then you harden it, as I did by raising the temperature up to a good cherry red, almost orange, then dunking it in water immediately to quench it. Then after that, I put it in this bed here. I preheated these. They are uh, not ideal um, brass chips because they're from my own machining and they had oil on them so they uh, they need it needed to be uh, burnt off which i did do uh, off camera and really got all those really hot then i put the spring into it heated underneath as you saw watched it when it changed color i then withdrew the heat and left it in there so that it cooled down very slowly and now it's in the clock and it's back and it's working really I'm quite happy to say that it's working you know it's clicking in and it didn't before I wound up the, the mainspring and it just jumped so um, if you find that you haven't got a spring that's springing then you can go through that procedure and reharden it temper it and get it working again I hope that's of help um, it took me a long time to and a lot of research 
uh, to find out <coughs> where I got it and how it all worked. Um, what I researched most successfully was uh, a, a YouTube heat treatments of steel one hardening tempering annealing and normalizing uh, and it was by that lazy machinist it, it's uh, quite a long procedure that he puts you through but if you analyze it you can actually come up with something which I couldn't find anywhere else on the internet and I was stumped and I didn't know how to make a spring springy again without having to replace it with new spring material. So, that's it. Bye.